What up, guys? The Bench Buddies are back with our college basketball week 14 top 25. As always, I have Ty joining us in this week's video. But before we get into our rankings, make sure you hit that subscribe button down below where we will be doing a giveaway at 500 subscribers. And all you have to do to be entered into that giveaway is just be subscribed to our channel. So don't miss out. But before we even get into our top 25, we have to look at who dropped from the rankings. You have Clemson and Charleston, who is starting to fall back in the middle of the pack. And then you still have Clemson here and the others receiving votes. And I'll turn this one over to you, Ty. Which one of these five teams you know, could um, either get back into the rankings or possibly fall out of this category? I'm looking at Illinois as a team that continues to be on the rise. Uh, they did lose Saturday, but it was at Iowa, a tough place to play against a good team. Uh, and Illinois looked like a mess in early January, and now they look like we expected them to look, which is a top-tier Big Ten team uh, and a really good team who's going to be a tough out in March. Yeah, I got to go with uh, San Diego State Aztecs. This team is right around the bubble, you could say, for our top 25 almost every week. It feels like they're still ranked in the AP poll after a loss to Nevada, and we still keep them here just because – there is going to be a team out of that Mountain West that I think will end up in the top 25 at the end of the year. Could it be New Mexico? Could it be San Diego State? Who knows? But that's a good conference that I think doesn't get enough credit for not being a non-Power 5. And then you got to look at those three ACC teams here. And ACC play is heating up. I think there's like eight teams all within a game of each other in the middle of the pack. So definitely going to be an interesting ACC tournament next month. And then we'll jump in to our rankings at 25. We have Auburn staying put. Not sure why the AP poll took them out. I get that they lost to Tennessee, but they lost by three and on a controversial call that should have been called on the foul that wasn't called. You know, he got hammered. He didn't give him any room to land for his three-pointer, and he got taken out. His legs were wrapped around the other dude's waist, it looks like, in the video, and there wasn't a call there, which could have given him three free throws and a shot to tie the game to send it to overtime. But that did not happen. And we have to face with the reality of Auburn has lost their last three or four games. And this team has hit a road bump and the teams they play this week are not going to get any easier. They already lost to Texas A&M once Alabama. Well, they're on a roll right now. They're rolling. So if Auburn can somehow win both of these games this week, this team might be jumping up into the top 15 at that rate. But if they lose uh, probably one of these games, they will for sure be out of our rankings next week. At 24, Florida Atlantic finally loses. Uh, they had a 20-game win streak. They were undefeated in conference play. Uh, but they lost on the road to UAB. And if they were going to lose a game in conference, that would have been the one. UAB, remember, they were in the tournament last year. They have a really good point guard in Jelly Walker. Uh, so that's a tough game. Not not anything uh, too concerning for Florida Atlantic uh, in any conference is tough to go undefeated. So uh, losing that game, no shame in that. And if they can run the table in conference play and win the conference tournament, I think they should be probably around the six, seven seed range uh, if they can do that. But Either way, I think they're going to be a tough out in March. They can shoot really well. Uh, they can put up a lot of points. I don't think anyone wants to see them. At 23, the Rutgers Scarlet Knights are making their first appearance in our rankings this year. And this is due to them being probably the biggest surprise in the Big Ten. No one really thought that this team would compete um, after last year. You know, they did do a little bit of damage in the conference and then kind of sputted out at the end. But this team is getting hot at the right time. Yes, I know they've lost two games to Iowa this year in conference. I get that. But at the same time, this team also beat at Purdue. And that win right there just solidifies to me that this team, when they play their best, they can beat the top teams in the country. And it's deserving here why we got to give them their ranking. They are only two and a half games back in the Big Ten. So we're going to see how that plays out. And they got two tough road games this week. And if you win both of those games, well, I think this team could possibly have a conversation for almost the top 10 ranking just because of how good those two teams are um, in the country right now and especially because they are on the road. We got Creighton, another team, making a jump into the rankings. Uh, they were ranked very high in our rankings early in the season, but it's their first time uh, being in here in quite a while. I think they were 6-6 six and six at one point in the season. Uh, and, you know, if, they, if it wasn't quite that, they were not good. Uh, in December, they had, I think, a five-game losing streak. And now they're finally healthy and they're getting back to where everyone thought they would be at this point, which is a really good team. And they still have a shot to win the Big East after that terrible start 
uh, earlier in the season. And I would not be surprised if they at least get a share of that conference uh, because, you know, UConn looked like they were going to run away with it. Now they're pretty much out of it. So it is kind of wide open at this point. So uh, if Creighton can stay hot, if they can beat UConn at home this week, uh, then I would watch out for the Blue Jays because they are on a tear right now. 21, we do have those UConn Huskies moving up a little bit. And, you know, you said it, this team was running away, but in their last 10 games, they're four and six. So if you take those games away, this this team was 14-0 and at one point this season. And on a mission, you know, they were number one in our rankings twice this year. They haven't fallen out since that point, but this might be the week where they're going to fall out because you can see we also have Marquette ranked 13th and then Creighton, who we just talked about. They got to play both those teams. And if this team wants to stay ranked, they got to go one and one this week at least. And honestly, how this team's been playing, I don't see how that's going to happen because they're running in two buzzsaws at a bad time. And Miami jumps up from 22 to 20. Uh, they get a really big win on the road against Clemson. Uh, you kind of felt like Clemson was due for a loss like that because they were just running right through the ACC. I think they're 11 and one uh, in the conference. But either way, that's a really big win. And a game that can not only build their resume, but it gives them a slight chance uh, for an ACC title, at least a share at the end of the season, as now they're two games back of Clemson, or one game back now. Uh, but yeah, that's a, that's a huge win for Miami, and I think it helps them because they were kind of inconsistent at times. Uh, and now they get two home games coming off a big win, so it's a chance to get a couple big wins in a row and start to get hot at the right time. At 19, TCU comes in after... A very ugly week, you could say. Uh, they lost to Oklahoma State. You know, it's the best team in Big 12 play this year. But that team is clicking and is getting hot at the right time. So don't count out those Oklahoma State Cowboys yet. They could make a no make a run to help TCU, you know, a little bit down the stretch. But the, the Horn Frogs, their biggest tests are these last seven games. Five of the next seven are facing ranked teams right now. And you can see they're going on the road to Kansas State and then playing Baylor at home. You know, this is going to be a conference where I have no clue who's going to win the Big 12 right now with a little less than, you know, eight games left. You think you might have a clear-cut favorite? I have no clue who's going to win. And you're going to see how close all these teams are in our rankings as we move forward here um, in our rankings because they're just too close to call right now. And at 18, we have the Providence Friars staying put. A tough loss to Xavier going down just by two points but once again they're right in the thick of things here in the big east unfortunately they're a game and a half back now of xavier and marquette so i don't know if i see them quite pulling it off uh and winning the conference like they did last year but either way it's it's another year where expectations were not very high for them and they're performing at a high level right now they look like probably a four to six seed somewhere in that range and this week the way St. John's has been really struggling, I would expect them to go 2-0, and uh, and that would put them in really good position to compete for the Big East and you know, trend towards a top four seed in March. And once again, they're going to be a dangerous team because they get to the rim a lot, and a lot of fouls get called typically in March Madness. So I would watch out for the Friars. At 17, the Indiana Hoosiers make a jump up, even after a tough road loss to Maryland. They rebound with the biggest win of the year beating Indi you know beating Purdue in the Indiana rivalry uh you know it was obviously a great game for both teams but Indiana came out on top and they needed it the most uh this team is seven and five in Big Ten play and that doesn't really mean anything right now just because everyone is jumbled up right there in the middle it goes Purdue Rutgers and then everyone and you know this team could end up as a 10 seed or they could end up as the three seed just determining on how they play these next few weeks but they got Rutgers at home which should be a great game and then on the road at Michigan who seems like they're starting to find their stride you know a little bias there a little you know just because it seems like they're starting to play a little better but it seems like Indiana and Michigan always have played close games over the years no matter how good or bad the teams are so that'll be an interesting game to watch out for this weekend we got Gonzaga dropping all the way out of the top 15 now they fall to 16 and, you know, I don't think this is the same Gonzaga that we've seen in previous years. A lot of people kind of had in the back of their mind, like, oh, maybe they'll finally figure things out, get back to being that top five or top 10 team that we're used to seeing. Uh, but I think at this point, St. Mary's has taken the driver's seat in the West Coast Conference. Gonzaga is no longer the top dog, at least for this season. 
Because now they're two games back, and I don't see them uh, getting back in the race because St. Mary's is going to just run through the bottom-tier teams in that conference. And, you know, it's kind of a down year, I guess you could say, for Gonzaga now with five losses and two conference losses, uh, which is pretty rare for them. Uh, they'll still be, you know, top five seed in March, and they'll still be a tough out. But I don't see them really making a run to the Final Four uh, like they had a chance to the last couple of years. At 15, you want to talk about surprises. You got these Xavier Musketeers leading the Big East right now with Marquette. And no one saw this coming. The Sean Miller effect is real. You know, his first year at Xavier, just immediately take over and take the whole nation by storm. You know, obviously his whole situation with Arizona got him out of there. But he comes back into coaching and it seems like, you know, he's the same old, same old with this Xavier team. Fremantle has been excellent for them down low. And I just really like this Xavier team. I think they could be a dark horse to make an Elite Eight Final Four run this year. Um, they're putting the pieces together. You know, it kind of seems like they have the providence of last year in the Big East. No one's still giving them enough credit uh, for what they're doing so far this year. And they just keep proving people wrong by winning good games. We got Iowa State now starting the Big 12 trend going forward. They come in at number 14. A huge win uh, at home over Kansas where they really dominated that game. They win by 15. They blew, I think it was a 23-point lead at Texas Tech. And, you know, they got to be kicking their, themselves because if they could have won that game, not only would they be in first by themselves in the Big 12, but they'd definitely be a top 10 team as well. Uh, but either way, even with that tough loss, I still think this is a really good team. And this would be probably one of the top, maybe even five teams that I would really not want to play in March because they can just shut teams down and they have enough scorers on offense uh, to get it done against pretty much anybody. So this team is not what they were last year when they were like 15 and 0 and turned out to be a bit of a fluke. It's not that team. This team is very good and they're going to compete not only in the Big 12 but to maybe even get to a final four. In our next Big 12 team, you got Kansas State falling out of the top 10. And this is just in part to them going 1 and 3 in their last four games with their only win against Florida. And, you know, that's looking like a decent win right now. Um, just depend, you know, how they finish out the season. But they're playing some good ball. And the big thing for them is their hardest part of the Big 12 schedule is over, in our opinion here. Um, you know, five of the remaining games are against the bottom four teams in the conference. And, you know, one of those games against it's not in the bottom four is TCU, who they play, uh, you know, very soon. So, if Kansas State can get a win against TCU and go on the road and beat Texas Tech, this team might be jumping back into the top 10 next week. But obviously you have to talk about the Keontae Johnson story and what he's been through at Florida, his collapse and his, you know, second coming of him, you know, being a breakout star of the transfer portal and, you know, all, all college basketball as well. So that's a good story to see and to root for him as well. So you got to love this Wildcats team really coming out of nowhere, making a big splash and, you know, six and four in the Big 12 is nothing to hang your head about right now in this season. And another Big 12 team coming in at number 12, uh, we have the Baylor Bears. Tough road loss to Texas, but they are still playing about as well as anyone in the country at seven and one in their last eight games. And they just can they can shoot the lights out on any given night. And I think that's what makes them a really dangerous team. They might be one of my top three teams uh, right now that I would not want to play just for that reason. They can just uh, shoot you out of the building on any night, and that's got to be very scary for anyone who's going to face them in March. They have two guards in uh, Keontae George and Adam Flagler that are two of the best in the country, uh, and guards are usually what gets it done in the tournament. So I think this team's going to be dangerous going forward, and I would not be surprised if they at least get a share of the Big 12 championship. At 11, we got Kansas falling just one spot. Uh, they got the revenge, you know, on Kansas State, and then they lost to Iowa State by 15 on the road. So I couldn't move them down too much. You know, this team obviously got a big win and then suffered a tough loss to a good team. So Kansas, I think, you know, I think you might want to put the narrative in that this team is nothing like last year's team. They're not the same. And I'm very, very scared that this could be a team that gets upset in March Madness in the round of 64. It just seems like they play to teams' levels, and when they do that, that only hurts them in the long run. So I expect them to play a great game against Texas, 
and then, you know, could slip up against Oklahoma just because it seems like, you know, they're right there. And if Jalen Wilson has an off night, well, then you can pretty much say that this Kansas team is going to get blown out of the water because that's what happens. It feels like if they don't start off hot and Wilson starts off hot as well. But, you know, you still can't count out the defending champions just because of what they did last year. And almost half of the same roster is coming back, too. And into the top 10 now are the St. Mary's Gales. Seems like every year this team is really good and nobody ever talks about them. Uh, but this year they're finally getting talked about after beating Gonzaga at home. They get the win in overtime. And they are really the only team in that conference who can beat Gonzaga with any sort of consistency. It seems like they get it done at home more often than not. And now this year they're in the driver's seat to win the West Coast Conference outright. They have a two-game lead on Gonzaga, uh, two middle-of-the-road conference teams this week on the road. So if they can get through both of those, you got to like their chances to win that conference. And I think they're a dangerous team in March. They have two good guards. And like I said, guards typically get it done in the tournament. And this team can shoot really well. So I would not just look at St. Mary's as a mid-major and pick them to get upset. I would uh, at least think about that a little more uh, because this team is really good. At nine, Marquette is jumping into the top 10 as well. Their highest ranking this year. And they're on a five-game winning streak in the Big East, which is tough to do. And this team, I think, could be one of those dark horse teams that makes a run as well. It's going to be someone from the Big East. I just have a feeling this year, and it's too good basketball being played right this year in the Big East, where last year it was kind of Villanova and Providence were really kind of the only two teams. But, you know, UConn's on a slide that's still been great. Um, and it just seems like there's four or five teams that could make a push uh, for at least a Sweet 16 appearance. And Marquette is the heavy favorite to do that out of those teams. And if they can go on the road here, get two more solid road wins, uh, especially the UConn one, not really the Georgetown one, but go to 13 and two in conference play with a little over, I think, five games remaining after that, then Marquette pretty much has sold me that this team could make a deep run heading into March. And just ahead of them, we have UCLA coming in at number eight. Uh, this team should be a top five team. They had one very bad week uh, where they just really struggled to score the ball. And if that never happened, then they would definitely be in the top five because this has been a really good team outside of those two games. Uh, eight and two in the Pac-12. And they're going to have to beat uh, Arizona in the rematch at home if they're going to have a shot to win the Pac-12 or at least get a share of it. But either way, uh, I think this is a team that can make another deep run in March. Uh, we saw them in the Sweet 16 last year, Final Four the year before, and they still have a large chunk of that team uh, here two years later. So I think they're going to be really dangerous with all that experience going into March. And I, for one, would pick them to go pretty deep this year. At seven, Virginia comes in. Um, they had a tough road loss to Virginia Tech, but those Hokies are turning things around and, you know, they have had a lot of early season problems, but now they are playing some great basketball just to make the ACC even more complicated than it is. On any given night, you could lose to any of these teams. And Virginia, well, they are playing two teams at home that are in our others receiving votes category. If that's the case, Virginia wins both these games, then no doubt in my mind they have a case to get back into the top five. And Clark and Franklin can have great games. I think they can do it. You know, they, they have better guard play than Duke does. And NC State, well, they're just the overall all around a great team and they're going to have to have a complete performance to win that game. But these Cavaliers has really shocked a lot of people this year um, on how good they have been. You know, we thought they'd be okay. Nothing too crazy, but they weren't ranked number one once this year. We had to give them that credit. And that just shows that how good this Virginia team has been. And at number six, we have Tennessee, a bit of a head scratcher losing to Florida. And then they win an absolute rock fight over Auburn. 46-43 was the final. I watched a lot of that second half, uh, and it was ugly, but that's typically how Tennessee's been playing this year. They get it done on the defensive end, and they score just enough. And, you know, they're ranked number six, so typically that's been working for them. Uh, now 19-4. and four. This week I would expect them to get back on track, get two more wins, as Vanderbilt has not been very good, and then Missouri at home. So uh, if they're 21-4, and four, I think they should be back in the top five. Uh, but the question is going to be, can they get it done in March? Because as of late, they have not been doing that. They've had a lot of early exits 
even as a really high seed. So we'll see if they can change that this year. And at five, starting in top five, we have Texas making the jump from nine to five. And this is because they beat Baylor and Kansas State, two teams that were ranked in the top 10 last week. And they also lead the Big 12 at eight and two in that one game over Iowa State. And they have Kansas on the road tonight, I believe. And that should be a great game to determine who's really going to take over the Big 12. Is it going to be the Pack or is it going to be Texas starting to run away? So that's a huge game for them. And then West Virginia has gave some people fits there in the Big 12. But Texas, I think they can take care of business. But you got to look at what this team has been through, you know, the Chris Beard situation, you know, and how they handled that. I thought for sure they would get upset that next game, but they still came out. And won in overtime. I know it's overtime, but they still came out and won that game. And since that moment, they really haven't, you know, stopped what they thought this team would be. Marcus Carr is having a great performance. You know, last year he struggled a little bit, but he's really breaking out again. And Sir Jabari Rice has been an excellent piece next to him. So this Texas team right now is one of my favorites to possibly go win this whole thing in March. At number four, we have Alabama still undefeated in the SEC. And yes, you're reading that right. They beat Vanderbilt by 57, and I believe that was on the road. So uh, they've had a couple of those this year where you have to double check the score, maybe go look at the box score, because it's just amazing that they're beating these teams by this this much. Uh, and Vanderbilt's not a terrible team. They're not good, but you know, to beat a team by 57, obviously you're doing something right. And you know, I think I'd look at this team as kind of one B. I think Purdue's probably the best team but Alabama's got to be right there and you know if they can keep winning games in dominant fashion like this they might be my pick to win the whole thing at the end of the year at three another favorite is the Arizona Wildcats and well I if you're talking about teams that aren't getting enough credit it's this Wildcat team mostly because everyone on the east coast is sleeping by the time this team is starting to play a game and you know in all fairness people need to stay up and watch this Wildcat team they're on a six game winning streak beat Oregon and Oregon State by 15 or, or more points last week. To Bellis has been excellent. You know, I think he could almost win player of the year, uh, the numbers he's putting up and how much of an impact he is. And Balo has been great, almost averaging a double-double. Those two guys, if they stay out, stay out of foul trouble in March, I expect a deep run from them. Maybe they could be a one seed depending on how they end up in Pac-12 play. But I don't know. It seems like, you know, you said it. Uh, before we started the video, it seems like there could be 15 teams that could win this tournament. But I think Arizona is up there for one of the favorites. And number two, we have the Houston Cougars. They've kind of started struggling their way through conference play, uh, similar to what we've seen with Gonzaga in years past, where it gets to late January, early February. And I don't want to say they get bored, but it almost is kind of like that. They almost get, you know, just tired of beating up on subpar teams and it kind of gets to them and we saw that with Houston with that bad home loss to Temple uh so I, I think if you take that loss away this would probably be the number one team uh and they're still you know one of the five best teams in the country but I think it'll be interesting after playing in such a weak conference you know for 20 games like we always see with Gonzaga can they make a deep run still in March when the competition you know ratchets back up and then at one, we still have those Purdue Boilermakers for the sixth time this year. And, you know, the big story for them was losing on the road to rival Indiana by five. But at the same time, I mean, Purdue just had a few things not go their way. Too many turnovers, which is very unlike this Purdue team. And the thing that stood out to me most wasn't the game. It was Zach Eady um, in the press conference. I don't know if you guys saw the video. But he stepped up for his teammate that had a costly turnover at the end of the game. And he said it wasn't just on him that did it. You know, Edie took charge and really became the leader of that team, in my opinion, in that moment, saying it was the team's fault. You know, he had some costly turnovers in the first half. And it just seems like this is a band of brothers, these Purdue Boilermakers. You know, they're there for each other. They got each other's backs no matter what's going to happen. But at the same time, you also have to think, what if this team did not have Zach Eady? Then this team, well, I think they would be a one and done in March, if that's the case. Because right now, they're guaranteed a spot in March. But if he somehow gets hurt or, you know, is going to miss a game with an illness or whatnot, it'll be very interesting to see how this Purdue team will play. 
just because of how much he means to this team. But that's going to be it for our video this week. Make sure you guys come back soon and check in on our March Madness predictions. We will be getting those fired up now that it is February. Uh, and come back next week to see where your team ranks or if we have a num new number one next week in our video. But until the next time, the Bench Buddies are out. She never called back.